For more analysis on the Chinese economy, we're joined now live by Dan McClory, Managing Director and Head of China at Boosted Securities. Welcome back. Thanks, Jessica. Good to have you. Uh, so, you know, Liu He made a bunch of uh, remarks to the media about his analysis of what's going on with the Chinese economy. One of his observations is that, yes, the trade war is having an impact on the Chinese economy, uh, excuse me, economy, but so are Beijing's efforts to restructure the economy. And I, I think he said, without private enterprises, the entire economy cannot achieve stable development. So uh, on, the, on the side of, of what he had to say, uh, what, are you, what are you making of the signal he's sending to private industry? What are you making of his, mark, uh, his, his remarks overall in terms of the, the place that the economy is in right now and the causes of that? Well, I think we heard a, a couple of really good reports from, from Beijing that just came in preceding this segment. And you know what, what we have is deceleration, right? We, we, we have slowing down a little bit of the economy. And this is, this is very different from anything approaching uh, a recession or a major correction. And in terms of comparing it to what's occurred in the past, Jessica, it wasn't so long ago that we used to think of the U.S. consumer as being kind of the consumer of last resort for China. We were buying all these things in the U.S. Guess what? You know, the Chinese consumer is alive, kicking, thriving, 9% growth in September. So a good part of that rebalancing has occurred. And I've got to agree with the last piece where it is so much more psychological than it is real. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the amount of concern has, has increased at a, such a tremendous pace. It's not at all in proportion to what the statistics would tell us about a slight deceleration in the growth of China's economy. Yeah, we have to remember the scale here of the economies in question, right? How, how enormous the Chinese economy is. Um, but I guess the, uh, the other question I would ask is about the private sector in China. Um, without private enterprises, as I said earlier, Liu He said the entire economy cannot achieve stable development. Um, your right. thoughts on the signal he's sending there? Well, it, it's, it's a completely correct statement. And let's look at it this way. China's got two main goals. One is the stabilization of the economy. And the other is deleveraging, so taking debt out of the system. Really hard to do both of those at the same time. However, progress is being made, especially with private companies. What we're seeing from Chinese companies, ones that are private ones that are positioned well, is that they are paying down dollar-denominated debt, and at the same time, they are raising capital in dollars where they can. And as an underwriter of IPOs, Bausted Securities is in the middle of about a dozen transactions right now. And we see companies from China going to New York every week, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, and listing their shares and raising capital in dollars. So that's a really smart arbitrage for them to pull off. I would also say that when you talk about the growth in the economy, when we go back nine, almost 10 years, and we're coming out of the global financial crisis, remember China had a government-led stimulus program of about $800 billion, okay? well. To your point about the private sector, just in the past week, about half of that amount, about $380 billion in private sector-led infrastructure projects have been announced in China. So I think shifting some of this emphasis and responsibility over to the private sector to help things move along is, is actually taking place. What struck you about the sectors and industries that are performing well and the ones that aren't about this latest bout of information? Well. We can only make predictions on, on sectors because there really hasn't been a full-scale reduction per se. You know, we've heard, for example, that there were uh, a lot of purchases and, in fact, a lot of exports that took place that were attempting to pull ahead of these, these looming tariffs, which have now settled in. Um, but a couple of sectors that I've seen that are being particularly active, and this is in response to uh, government policy in China, uh, would be automotive and chemicals. Mm -hmm. So in the automotive sector, you know, we've read about it for the last few weeks and, and just yesterday, you know, Tesla has announced that they've secured right. the land in Shanghai, about $150 billion, and they're going to, excuse me, $150 million, and they're going to move ahead with a 100% owned plant, which you could never do in the automotive industry before. BMW has just bought back the remaining 50% interest in their joint venture. So I think you're seeing FDI, you know, foreign direct investment is in fact up, again, in the magnitude of seven or eight percent. That's a positive signal. So I really, to your question, Jessica, I really haven't seen uh, any type of a drop off 
in particular sectors or industries yet. Everybody's looking at electronics and the global supply chain and things that are related to some of the, what are perceived to be higher tariff items, but mm -hmm. it really hasn't taken effect yet. Do you get the sense that the government's very concerned about the slowdown, though, even though it's also, you know, in a way trying to talk about the inevitability of some slowdown with respect to the economic rebalancing it's undertaking? Absolutely. You, you can't have unbridled growth for decades. I mean, China's been in an expansionist mode for, we heard it before, four decades. Um, massive growth. But, you know, the analogy that I make, Jessica, is if you look at the sport of track and field, you look at the 100-meter dash, and you see the competitors, and as they approach the finish line, one or two or three pull ahead from the others. Guess what? They're not really pulling ahead. They're just slowing down slower, okay? Everybody's slowing down. They're just slowing down slower. That's this deceleration that we're talking about. You'd be the first to admit that any industrialized country on the planet that could say that they had grown at 6.5% in the last quarter would be the talk of the town. Um, so uh, to your comment about keeping things relative, we've got to do that. China's economy has gone from $5 trillion in 2009 to over $12 trillion today. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable growth. Yeah, the sky is not falling chicken little, as they say, right? No, <laughs> Thanks has not. Thanks very much, Dan McClory, for your thoughts.